Okay, guys, welcome back. Sean Adley Studios. Tonight, I have got a pretty cool little hack that we should have probably addressed um, a while back here before, you know, right when I started my channel kind of thing. And it has to do with latency. And uh, if you're any kind of a recording person that's doing digital interfaces, latency is a big issue. And uh, although Studio One has zero latency monitoring built into it there are still some you know freak freak things that can happen that just kind of make the uh the you know the signal bounce around a little bit so by the time you play your guitar chord it goes through your board your interface into your daw comes back out through your monitors and into your ears it goes click click type thing right and it's pretty hard to do unless you got a pretty fancy board that you can kind of do like a, a an analog mix and monitor that way, um, which is what I have here. Uh, you, you're battling that all the time. And I, I understand not everybody has that. When I say that, I'm talking about little mixers like this. Um, this Behringer isn't a, uh, a digital mixer by any stretch, but I can use this for an example. Basically, you're monitoring out your main outs, right? So we want to take a patch cable and we want to take an open monitor out on your interface and wire it back in like this into an open channel, just like that, right? So we're creating a loop, if you will. And we're just doing that to, uh, you know, find out how many samples in milliseconds we need to uh, set an offset for. So let me show you how to do that. Again, I'm not using this one. I'll show you on my studio live here how we're going to achieve that. So first thing we're going to do is create a new song. And when that opens up here, we're going to simply call this loop back um, test, I guess. Loop back test. And don't have to worry about any other settings. Just hit OK. So now that that's opened up, I need three tracks to do this uh, to show you guys how to do this properly because we're going to do the audio which is analog audio vocal uh, guitar bass etc uh, but I also want to do a little one on the MIDI patch as well because it's a little bit different and that can give you a headache as well so let's um, add three tracks here so uh, track let's go add track so i could just hit my t button or hit add tracks this way actually i don't want to do it that way i want to add mono track so i'm just going to hit a mono track there's one and i need another one there's two and i'm also going to add one one midi track to this as well okay so that's in there uh next thing i'm going to do is go up to this oh, up to the eye over here for the inspector because we're going to be doing a little bit of playing around in here uh, we're gonna go over to um, loops and when this opens up I have a blank screen just like that and we're gonna type in there one shot and as I start typing it auto fills right away so I'm gonna click on one shot and it's gonna populate a whole bunch of uh, search and this is all stock plugins guys so when I'm in here in the search in the search bar it's everything stock uh, uh, don't worry you have it if you got studio one i have professional but if you've got studio one you've got these um and what did i do here one shot and then i'm going to click on bass uh, when in instrument here i'm just going to click on bass because i know what file i'm looking for and this first one right here is a bass analog d wave and if you, it sounds like this right so that's what it sounds like and we're going to use that just to trigger and and count our milliseconds okay so I'm just gonna drag that into the first track and I'm gonna put it right on the downbeat on the second bar here actually let's move it to four just so it's in the middle of the screen or somewhat middle of the screen and first thing we need or next thing we need to do after that is we need to tell track two so when I play this you're gonna hear it come through through the, the mix here right so now you've heard that um, we're going to take track two. I'm going to set this up first because I got my camera here on a gimbal. And I'm, I'll, I'll set up the DAW first. 
and then I'll spin the camera around and I'll show you the back of the board here. Okay, so uh, from there, I'm going to simply arm, or actually I'm going to, uh, we're gonna pull up the, uh, the IO and I can do that down here. I can go to the input on, uh, on this second channel here, the second track, and I can go to audio, IO setup, and just click that on, or open, sorry. And in here, I'm going to uh, create a new track. I know I've got inputs in here already, but just for the, for the sake of the video, let's pretend you don't have any of this stuff in here. I'm going to create a new mono track, just like that. And in here, we're also going to call this, um, just like the other one, Rec, rec Record. Just so we don't get too confused. And I'm actually going to put this on channel 10. Uh, I have all these channels available to me. You're, you're going to see, you know, channel one or two probably on your DAW uh, or on your interface, or maybe you've got an eight channel interface or something like that. Um, but just just pick one. It doesn't matter which one it is. It could be one or two. It doesn't matter. Pick one and we'll, we'll dedicate this to it. Okay, so channel 10. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit OK. So now, in, if I go down into here, I've got my channel. I can actually just drop this down and get to the same, same menu here as I can here. Um, I like to, you can do, do it wherever you, wherever you want to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna, now I'm going to arm this track uh, for, for channel 10 on my board. And basically what's going to happen is this is going to, that tone is going to play and it's going to record into this track here, right? And uh, actually, well, I'll just show you what it's going to do here. So it's just going to do this. And it didn't do that because... Oh, <laughs> I'm kind of dumb sometimes, you guys, here. Um... Yeah, <laughs> it has been a long night. I haven't hooked, hooked up my patch cable, so I don't know why. I got nothing going into channel 10. Okay, so let's take the patch cable. I'm going to pick you up here, and we're going to swing it around, and uh, hopefully this works out all right. Here's my board. I'm going to be using... Uh, I'm going to be using channel 10 here, this guy right here, only because when I show you the back... i got to pull this out a little bit. Not drop it on the floor. That would not be good. Main out right here to channel 10. And as soon as I do that, because I got that track armed, you're going to hear a difference in the audio immediately. So let's plug that in to there. Yes, I'm using a guitar patch, and I, sh I know I shouldn't be, but just for the sake of this video, this is what we're doing. Okay, as soon as I plug that in, you immediately heard... Let me spin this around again, guys. Okay, as soon as I plug that in, you immediately... And there we are. Okay. You immediately heard that slap back. And that is because... I've got two patches coming through the output now. But that this is what we want to measure, okay? Okay, so yeah, you're hearing uh, you're hearing some slap back going on because of this, and that's what we want to get rid of. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to record this this piece of bass here, this little tone right here. I'm going to record that onto the bottom track here, and that's done like this. So here we go. There it is. I'm just going to normalize the auto just audio just so you can see the wave file here. And if I zoom into that, right here, if I zoom in, I'm, I'm in quite a ways here now. Quite a way, ways, quite a way. So now you can see that I keep ducking under this thing so I can see my screen. Okay, so you can see if I tab to transient here, I'm going to tab over and let's do it this way. So it tabs over to the, right on the downbeat of this wave file that we just did. Then over here, if I highlight this one and I tab over, there is the beginning of the wave file. So you can see that on your screen, right? So that's what we need to measure. So let's go back to the first one. 
tab over and now we're going to go down to the bottom of our transport window here uh, so as you can see, or, or sorry, so now we're going to go down to uh, second samples, bars and frames in the transport window and we're going to change that to samples. And why we're doing that, I'm going to command comma, which is going to bring up my preference window, right? And so we've got the audio um, or you can go studio one preferences right here. So we're looking at the audio here and it's in samples which is why for record offset this is the box we're going to be changing and so that is why we need to change this to samples because it allows us to do our math properly okay so i transient over tr i did the transient tab over to the beginning of the one of the downbeat here on this first file and we're going to pay attention to right here where it says three seven six four six seven we actually only need the last three numbers so 467 grab a piece of paper and write that number down four six seven there you go okay then we're going to put the focus on the next track and we're going to tab over to that and it goes right it, 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 it tabs over to the next transient which, which is the beginning which is the beginning of this, uh, damn, I'm 18 minutes here already, which is crazy, uh, which is the beginning of this audio file. So now we just leave that there and we go to the bottom and we see it says 623. So that's the next number we want. 623. Let's grab our trusty iPhone and we're going to do the math. So uh, 467, right, minus 623 equals negative 156. I know that's backwards probably in your camera there. So negative 156, that's what we need to put in there. So and back in that record offset field. So again, command comma, and we're going to go where it says samples and we're going to go negative 156 and we're going to hit apply and hit OK. And now that we've done that, and it, no, it doesn't fix the audio because I got that other patch in there. It doesn't fix that, but it will fix the recording. Uh, the only way to fix this is to get rid of that other patch because you should never patch a board like that. Um, so we're just going to delete that and now we're going to re-record it. There we go. There, it's a clean file now. Okay, so again, jump over, 467, shows down here. Put the focus on the next one, tab over. Look at that, 467. So now these two files are perfectly in sync to each other. Okay, so before I unplug that, I'm now I'm going to show you the, uh, actually, I'll just leave that here and we'll record beside it. Now I'm going to go into the MIDI portion of it because that's a little bit different too. And um, first let's spring up um, command uh, comma. Again, we're going to click on the MIDI section. This record offset, it says 0ms, which means milliseconds. So now we need to change that, okay? So let's go to the bottom transport bar and let's put it on seconds, okay? So now it's gonna count in milliseconds and allow us to do the math. I need an instrument in here and I'm just gonna pick the Mai Tai and drag it on there. So there it is. And that sounds, uh, let's just do, all I want is just a, just a simple, simple tone. And so this is what it's going to sound like. like that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> um, and so I can run that from a keyboard now, right? So now that we need to make sure that's, you know, on the one as well. So if I just hit record here, let's zoom back in or out a little bit. So, and I just do this. Okay, and I zoom back in, excuse me, I zoom back into here. You can see 
that by the time the audio, you know, with the MIDI one, it has to actually go into the DAW and then come out to my board and then go back into the DAW. So the, the latency on that is bad too. And so you can see that here, it's uh, transient over to this one. There it is right there. And you can see on the bottom one, it's out, right? Okay, so this one, because it's going, it's going back and forth twice, it goes on the other side. Um, yeah, it goes the other way. So we're gonna have to actually put a positive number in here. Okay, so let's go down to the seconds bar and this now it says uh, 847, so 9.847 seconds, milliseconds, or the seconds, right? Uh, 847 is the milli part. Okay, so that is the number we're gonna write down. So it's gonna be 847. Put the focus on the next one and tab over to the front of that. And that one there says 842. Okay, so the first track says 847. And so we're going to write that down, 847, right? 84, where is it there? 847, doesn't matter. Okay, write it down and then put the focus on to the next track here. And we will transient over. And that one says 842. Okay, I don't actually have to do the math on that. Uh, I know it's 5, right? 847 minus 842 is 5. Okay, so now from there, we're going to go command, uh, command comma, and we're going to put five positive number here. We're going to put five in there. We're going to hit OK and, or apply and then OK. And we'll actually delete these two. And let's just put that back. I don't know why. It doesn't matter. Um, and we're going to re-record that now. So I'm just going to hit record and hit the keys and you'll see how that, that, what it did. Okay. So now I'm going to zoom in to these guys. Transient over and we look at the first one. I can see that they're both lined up already. And so now here we've got a 952 and I put one on the other track and we've got a 952. So they're bang on right now. So now when you're recording MIDI and drums and you're playing to a click track, they'll be bang on all the time. Okay. Um, now let's get rid of that, that double back slap. And I'm just going to unplug this and it'll get immediately better. There we go. That is gone. Now, the nice part about this is you only have to do it once, and I, I suggest you do this for any kind of DAW and interface that you're doing, and they all do. And I have the option to do that. So hopefully you learned um, something from that. I know when I stumbled across it on uh, on YouTube, it was like wow, it was like a you know a coming of something very great for me, and. Uh, you know, when you got a big a big board, you can you can use that as an actual mixer and then not have to actually monitor the audio coming out here. You can do it right out of your board. But this is good too. This is great actually. So if you like what you see, if you learned something from this, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, obviously, just, you know the the routine here. Subscribe to my channel, please. You want to see something else? Comment below. Um, like 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 like, and let's. Uh, Let's help support that channel. I, I appreciate every every uh, subscription I can get. And uh, we're going to see you in the next video. I got some really good stuff coming up here in the future. So we're going to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.